Hey, welcome. I'm Gary. I'm Arlene. Yep, she is. And we're here. Uh, works by ABC, says right up there in the corner. Arlene Cohen works by ABC. Uh, works by ABC.com also, just to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So we get to talk about, see and talk about the designs that you've put together for the Nashville market. Yes, absolutely. I'm I excited. was excited about two of them until we did the podcast. Now I'm excited about three of them. Well, I'm glad you're excited. And so, because right? in the one about that's words, that's just a thing. I just don't do words. So, yep. Oh, man. Okay. All right. So, we're going to start out with the one I, that I got newly excited about because now I'm really pumped up about it. So, uh -huh. this is landscape. All right. Yep. So, landscape. So, we're going to, uh, I'm going to go all Arlene because mm -hmm. nobody wants to look at me anymore anyway. So, all right. There's Arlene, and this is landscape. Now, can you see that okay? Yep, it's perfect. Right. Perfect. Okay, now, as I said in the podcast, when I looked at this, I just looked at it. It's like, oh, yeah. that's a sun, a couple of hills, and some sky. Whoopee. Mm -hmm. Nice, but nice pattern. Good job with black work. Mm -hmm. But it's not black work. No, it's not. Now I'm pumped it's... up about this. Yes. I like so, black work, but this is cool what you've done. Yes. So what... And so the inspiration from the, for this came from going to an exhibit at an art gallery. And there were um, a number of, of uh, paintings where a motif had been repeated over and over. And just where the color breaks were formed the, the design, the, the, the scene. And I thought, you know, the way the motif was, I thought, I could do that with cross stitch come up with a motif that was simple, small, um, repeat it, and just think about, and I, I didn't want to go into a complex scene, right. certainly the first time doing this. Um, right. And tilt that there, and, yeah, hold that right in there. There's a glare coming off of that so people oh. can't see. Yeah, I, see, I can't tell. Yeah, you can't what tell, you, there, that, that's good. That good, yeah. Okay, so um, I came up with just a small motif, um, I purposely didn't want to make this too large. This is fitting in a five by seven frame. So that just gives you a sense of the size on 32 count. Um, and I, I, you know, I was doing the math. I wanted to make sure that this would be a small piece. It's, um, you know, fits in a standard size frame kind of thing. Um, and then just a simple design. I used over dyed threads. These are all gentle art threads so that you get, um, the nice variegation in the sky, in the grass, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, just this is like the kind of situation where you would so want a perfect, you know, variegation to show up right, kind of thing. Right. Um, but it really is the same little square thing repeated over and over. And there are just places where, you know, half of it's blue and half of it's green and some of it's blue and some of it's yellow. Um, I really enjoyed stitching this because, and you would think it's all repetitive. Didn't it get boring? No, it didn't. What I did for stitching it is I did tend to stitch the areas that were only partial, you know, the ones where I really had to follow the chart carefully. And then, um, then I ended up with some fill in areas and that's, you know, sometimes you just want the mindless work of fill in areas right. that turned into be, you know, and you, I formed a pattern of like, Stitch up this way, three over, down, do the circle of the center, three, you know, right. form that over. And it just, it became like a very a soothing stitch. Um, and I just, I love the effect of it. And it's something that I want to do other designs like this. The idea of a, a simple repetitive motif um, with the changes of colors that can make an overall design in a different way. Now, see, all right, here's where, here's where the questions come in. So, now, I have seen people take a painted needlepoint canvas mm -hmm. and then just simply stitch a pattern yes. like that over it. And it's very effective, and, and, but let they, they let the painting do its thing. They just put mm -hmm. a pattern over it. It works very, very well. So that, this has that feel to it, mm -hmm. to me, because the, the effect, can you try, the, try on the other side to see if the glare goes away. Like this? Yeah, there. That's much better. Yeah. Oh. See, so so it has that effect for me because I've seen those others because mm -hmm. it looks like the scene is behind, at least to me, it looks like the scene is behind the stitching when in huh. fact the scene is the stitching. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's neat in its own right because it, it oh. looks like that. It looks like there's a almost a screen over the surface. Hmm. And so no. I, so then the other thing that I have is when you get to those color transitions. Yeah. Are those full X's that you're transitioning? Or are you doing partials? Nope. It's all full X's. Okay. It's all full X's. And so sure, the sun, the sun could have been a little more round. Yeah. yeah if I decided to go partials, but no, the whole idea was I wanted to do full X's, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing complicated. And it, it's, it's a full, all full X's design. Um, and you, you know, it's just that some of those X's are green and some are blue right? or the two different shades of green or what have you. There's just four shades, four colors in here. So, yeah. So we're just looking at four colors of thread, a five mm -hmm. by seven piece, same pattern. So there's, you just have to get the transitions placed right. Yep, exactly. Wow. I, I just have to say, wow, I did not see all of that when I looked at it. Oh, Bravo. Um, um, thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad you were like able to take a second look because that, that was a concern of mine that, you know, sometimes people just look very quickly. It's, it's just the reality. And I'm, I'm certainly sure at Nashville, there is so much to see right. that sometimes you just can't spend more than a couple of seconds looking at something. So, right. you know, this is an opportunity to really like look at something that's a little different and it certainly is a little different yeah. in this world, but yeah. Very creative. All right. That's a good okay. one. Okay. On to the words. On to the words. So, um, my words pattern, I'm just, so here's the pattern and I'm just going to use the back where I have the information on the back. Um, the words of this pattern come from, most, come from most of an essay that was written by John Perry Barlow in 1977 when he was 30. Calling his list Principles of Adult Behavior, he was quoted as saying, I don't expect perfect attainment of these principles. However, I post them as a standard for my conduct as an adult. Should any of my friends or colleagues catch me violating any one of them, bust me. <laughs> and I liked that. That's why I put okay. it on <laughs> and so um, here is holding up the correct. So I'm just trying to get it all yep. in. Yep. Um, and I really, you know, when I saw this essay and started, oh, I guess I should try it from this direction yeah. um, and started reading through these principles, these words, they just, you know, really hit me. You know, there was, I mean, some of the things in here starts out with be patient, you know, that's pretty good words of advice starting in the first two right there. Right. But I'll ju I'm just going to read through these so that, you know, someone could get expand your sense of the possible. Don't trouble yourself with matters you truly cannot change. Expect no more of anyone than you can deliver yourself. Tolerate ambigu ambigu ambiguity. <laughs> Don't badmouth. Laugh at yourself frequently. Concern yourself with what is right rather than who is right. Never forget that no matter how certain you might be wrong, learn the needs of those around you and respect them. Praise at least as often as you disparage. Admit your errors freely and, and soon. Become less suspicious of joy. Understand humility. Remember that love forgives much. Foster dignity. Live memorably. Love yourself. Endure. And I just, I thought that there was just a lot to be said in words like this. Yeah. In between each of those, there are all different motifs. These little motifs come from um, an old pattern book that, you know, you could just find these little things all over. Um, I used six, hold on, what did I do with the pattern? Um, one, two, three, yeah, six different colors. I mean, you could you could stitch this all in one color if you wanted right, to. Right. I, used, I used six different colors and then the yellow as an accent, so seven colors total. Um, mostly gentle arts gave it a little bit of variegated th colors to it. Doesn't need to be, you know, um, unlike the landscape one where the variegation really was an effective piece to it, right. you know, this just adds a little bit of extra to it. Um, and this I, is, this I, is one where you literally could just get the chart and then just go through your stash and say, I'm going to do these four colors in, yep. and then alternate them or do whatever you want to do with them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, 
you know, this was the sort of the, the color scheme that, that appealed to me. But if you want to do it in, you know, red, white and blue or something like that, that's, right. that's totally what could work. Um, and, you know, it's it's just something that, you know, good words of wisdom to have out there, uh, I think. Yeah. Is off is often found on a lot of cross stitch patterns, and this is just my take on that idea. No, it's a nice it's a nice collection there. Yeah, it, and they are, they are good words. And so yeah. that's over two on what thirty five count or something. Uh, this is uh, over two on thirty two count. Thirty two. Uh, yeah. Um, no, wait, hold on. No, it's it's on thirty. I did it on thirty six count over one. Oh, okay. And not sorry. No, one, <laughs> one over two on 36 count. Okay, one strand um, over two on 36. Okay. Correct, yes. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, I just, with, with one exception, which we're going to talk about, um, in general, when it comes to stitching and when you see models, like, I'm just so of, of the mind frame that you stitch on whatever size you want, whatever makes you comfortable. If you're not a 36 count person and you're a 14 count Ada person, go for it. It shouldn't make any difference what the model looks like right. or what, um, what the model is stitched on other than what size you have. You know, if you have a space on your wall, that's only so and so big, you know, that's probably your only consideration when it comes to, you know, what you're going to, what size you're going to stitch it on. But yes, yeah. they, and this was just a matter of, this is the fabric that I had and, this is what I wanted to go with, so I did. It wasn't it, there wasn't that much anal deep analysis of what what fabric is going to go well here, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because yeah, this is absolutely do it the way you want to do it. There's nothing going to stop you, and it's going to yeah. come out just as good with your colors as as what you chose there with anybody's. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's nice, and and I love that. I love that the little motifs. So you just you have just an old book, and you just pulled out some things, and yeah, yeah. Just to separate. Yep, just to have something that would separate them because yep. that was needed. It was some, you know, something that's needed there, and um, yeah. There's, so there's that little history connection that is often shows up in my patterns right. to be found right. there. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's nice. I, yeah. I mean, it's it's nice. Yes, I I like it, but mm -hmm. you know, I don't do words. So. <laughs> I, I, some people don't do words. I get that. I totally get it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now. The second of the three that really jumped for me, because it was just two, but the lace one, I think. Okay. I think so, because we knew there'd be a lace one in the collection. Sure. That w We'd have had to have you examined if you didn't do that. Absolutely. So, yeah, right. So this one. So this is the pattern. Here is... Um... Now, we should mention, we should mention, okay, we should mention that the patterns are available on your Etsy shop, but then you're distributed the through... They're, all right, so I'm distributed through Hoffman, and they should be um, on display in the Hoffman room at um, Nashville. And at some point after Nashville, they will be up in my Etsy shop. So they're not in my Etsy shop now as of the time you're watching the video. Okay. They, tr they truly will be released at Nashville, and they will not be available in my Etsy shop until after Nashville is, is over. So, so then when you place your pre-order, when people place their pre-order with their local shop for the Nashville releases, add those and they'll be able to get them at the Hoffman uh, room. Exactly. Yeah. If you see anything here that you're liking and want to have, you can ask your local needlework store to get at, um, in the Hoffman room and yeah. they should be able to get them there. Yeah. So, and, and if you are watching this video too late for that, then you can also get them through my Etsy store. Right. So yeah. Okay. At worksbyabc.com. Yes. Okay. This thing is flat out beautiful. Well, thank it has, you. It has, to me, my grandmother used to make doilies. Mm -hmm. I had a whole bunch of them. And I always marveled, and this is before I even realized that I was interested in stitching, but I always marveled at the intricacy mm -hmm. of those. And the minute I saw this, that's how it struck me, was that the delicate, intricate, uh, interwoven pieces. And uh, it just jumped out for me. And of course... Your color combination is right up my alley. I mean, I'll, I'll do that combination all day long. Sure. But, uh, you just really hit that. I like. I love this thing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you could tell from the picture, or even if I hold it up really close here, that what I've done here is used white thread in multiple ways. Yes. So there's some stitching that is one strand, some stitching that is two strands, and some stitching that is three strands. 
And that helps give the effect of, I mean, that you could see something is different. It's not just all one thing. You could see that something different is going on yes. in the different parts. Now, this is the same um, uh, method that I used when I had this piece on the cover of Just Cross Stitch from last summer. So okay. this late piece had the same idea that it was done using some parts, one strand, some parts, two, some parts, three. And I knew that that method was absolutely something I wanted to come back and do again. So, um, it, so it looks like there are three shades of white, but in, 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 in actuality, there's only one white thread used three different ways. Correct. Yes. Oh, I like the way you just phrased that. That was very nicely done there. Um, You're welcome. So, no charge. Yeah. <laughs> So yes, one white thread used three different ways. Now what that means is that in order to use three strands, um, I, I'm going to say you need, although you know you can do whatever you want, but you really sort of need to be doing this on 28 count or yes. on like a 14 count ADA. Yes. Um, because to get three strands on a 32 count or 36 count, you're that you're just getting too bulky at that point. So while I was saying before that um, most of my designs, I would say do whatever size you want. This this is that exception is that if you want to do that same effect that I have created here, my recommendation would be this is a, case, a place where you'd want to work on 28 count fabric so that you can get a nice look to three stranded areas. Yeah. Um, three, three stranded stitches, um, as well as the one and two stranded stitches. And see, and I would go to probably a Lugana. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but, um, uh, but that an even weave, I would go to an even weave and Lugana comes to mind mm -hmm. uh, at 28 count, uh, would be a nice cloth to work on. Do, yeah. Do you recall what you did that one on? I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, oh, it doesn't. I guess it does look like a linen. I think I had wanted to find like an even weave and there just wasn't anything in Navy that I could use. Yeah, yeah. I did. I, I was looking for Navy and in the moment that I just, I just didn't find it and I just used what was there. But yes, I, um, an even weave would work just perfectly Perfect, fine. Yeah yeah. 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 But yeah, you go much higher and, and you're exactly right. Three strands in, in 30 or 32 count and you're just, you're just wedging them in. That'd be ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Um, so, all right. But, so then, all right. So sh that we have, and then also as a result of one, two, and three strands, then mm -hmm. you're giving some texture. Yes. And so, I mean, I just love the effect. I mean, I, I think you could see, you know, like I'm pointing right here to a one strand area Yeah. and, um, uh, and there's three strands in the center part there. So you definitely get texture to it. You get, um, again just a different effect than you would have if you know if you had had three different colors or th three different shades of blue or something like that which frankly could be another way that you could stitch this design you know to pick three shades of whatever color you want and put it on um whatever color fabric you want yeah. that is certainly an option um this is just this is just you know really does reproduce it like a piece of lace to to put it with white thread um, and that's what I, that's what I like about it. Yeah. See, and I like this cause I have really recently become a fan of, of all the single color designs that are available mm -hmm. because it's, if, if you, if you make, if the designer makes an effort, you can do amazing things with one color of thread and a piece of cloth. Absolutely. And, and this is, this is a, a classic example right here. It, cause it appears like three colors. It has texture yet for the stitcher. All they have to remember is is whether they're using one, two, or three strands in a given area. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. there's actually very simple to do mm -hmm. in in that regard. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I have I stitched it, and I think of it as a vertical piece, but it works just as well as sure. a horizontal piece. Sure it does. For, you know, whatever you know works for you, kind of thinking. It's um, and it's a symmetrical piece. You know, so if you're into oh I'll I'll stitch this up here and then I'll do the exact same thing down here kind of thing. Yep. Works as well. And um, and that's you you have it framed, but no reason it couldn't be uh something to go on a table. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Any, yeah. any number of things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. It's beautiful. 
So now where does this design come from? Out of your head? It comes from a piece of lace, actually. Oh, it did? Okay. So, yep. all right. Yeah. And take a piece of lace um, that, you know, there's lots of pieces that could be purchased on eBay. And I work from that and, you know, have to kind of, for lack of better words, convert it to graph paper thinking. <laughs> yeah. However us say it. Um, but, I mean, and there's some pieces of lace that just wouldn't, wouldn't work to do something like that. Um, but this was totally inspired by an actual piece of lace. Yeah. And see, another thing I'm seeing there is don't do the center, just do the border. Mm -hmm. And then you can have that on a table to set a, a floral arrangement on or something. Yep. Yep. So another, you know, another way, because that border in, in its own right is very, very nice. Mm hmm So, oh, that's fun. All right. Bravo. Thank you. Yeah, I like that one. Okay. All yes. right. Now the, the tile. The tiles. So I'm just going to read from the back of the pattern here. Um, so as I... So, as I had said on the podcast, there are um, certain themes that show up in some of my patterns, lace being one of them, and pulling from historic old pattern books is another. And I, I could also say that just in general, I I have quite the var variation or var um, variety when it comes to my designs. Like even these four alone are four very different designs. Yes. But I wanted to make sure in, of the designs I was going to put out there for the Nashville market that I would, I would have things that would represent me. And one of them would, needed to be a lace piece, and one of them needed to be something that I pulled from old pattern books. And this is one. This came um, founding from a book um, published in Venice in 1546, so 16th century, um, by an Italian named Matteo Pagano. And I'm not going to try and butcher the Italian of the very long <laughs> name of this book, but it's written on the back here. And I do want to show, let me take it out of the um, plastic so that we don't get, this is, and I like to include this on my designs. Is that, do you got a glare? Can you see nope, that? That's good right there. Yep. So that is a picture of the actual book from, or the page of the book. Oh, where I got this design from. Now you observe this design is, well, you're going to see in a second, this is on a diagonal or I, you know, the way I looked at it was like, this is on a diagonal, but there was something about it. There was something about the, the symmetry, the geometry of it that just made me stop and say, huh, I wonder what that would look like if it was not on a diagonal. And uh -huh. if I followed like the repetition of what was clearly going on with, with these um, squares, right. I mean, it was like a repetitive pattern that just goes off the, um, the edge. Yep. So, you know, that's where I started playing around. And this is the result. Um, I mean, it's, it's completely symmetrical. I could hold it up anyway. Right. Um, I, uh, stitch this on 36 count with one strand of fabric. And in all honesty, that's just a little bit of laziness of just trying to put where I could stitch <laughs> using one strand of fabric. There's no, there's no reason that it needed to be on 36 count or one strand. Um, I know I, it, it's a three color design and I, I struggled for a while trying to decide what colors I wanted to stitch this model in. Cause I mean, one side of me wanted to do like a monochromatic doing three um, shades of the same color. I'm like, no, I feel like I do that too much. Um, I, 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 I didn't want to do bold, bright, like clearly primary colors, but that's what this is sort of, you've got the red, blue and yellow involved, but it's slightly off shades of that. Yeah. And it just, it's, I just, you know, that, that taking from what I found in the book and turning it on its side and then, you know, realizing what to cut, where to cut it and to make it as a square design was like the right place to cut it. Um, it just came out to be a great thing. And I called it Italian tiles because it came from an Italian book. Right. Now, um, how big is that piece right there? This is, um, do, 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 about seven inches by seven inches. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, so that also then would lend itself to just keep repeating that pattern mm -hmm. to make a long one or just make it, Another you, set bigger. Yeah, you, you absolutely could. I mean, this I you know, this seemed to be the right size to me. You know, one of the things I'm just lear trying to learn and understand as a designer is is trying to get that variety between large pieces and small pieces and medium sized pieces and what counts for what out there in the 
stitching world. Um, this it just seemed to be the right size to do, but it certainly could be, you could certainly like, you could see the beginning of a whole nother square right. added here. This square could be finished off here. It, you could literally use the pattern to, to repeat it more than once. Absolutely. Right. See, that's what I was seeing. And I was thinking, uh, now, you know, I don't know why I'm so wrapped up in, in things, but you could easily make a nice table runner out of that. Oh, you could. Just by just continuing on that pattern, mm -hmm. you'd have, that'd be, that'd be beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yep. see, that's, you know, that's, to me, that's what's fun, that the versatility there. Uh, mm -hmm. That obviously it's a beautiful design in and of itself, but the ver with just a little bit of imagination, you could take that and make it your own thing and, and go beyond that. You yep. could just do one square there, uh, mm -hmm. which would be a nice a nice touch too. So you, you could have a you could have that, and then some accessory squares or something. I also think it it would look quite different um, with different colors. Yes, you know, as I was playing around on the computer, like the computer generated version of this um, with different colors, trying to figure out what I wanted to stitch it in. It it really was taking on quite different looks with some very different color palettes. Yep. And also just like thinking about those motifs on the, the words pattern, you know, you get little motifs here that can then be pulled off and used in other ways that, you know, you might have a need for or use for in some way. Right. Right. Well, that's, that's my, my number one of the four. Okay. But right. it's now it's closely pushed by landscape. Okay. Yeah, Cause yeah. that landscape, that really caught me off guard. That's a good one. Uh -huh. Thank yeah. you. So yeah. four four beautiful pieces there. That's a good yeah. collection. And that's yeah. what that's what I always enjoy about your work is you you're not in you don't get stuck in a rut. <laughs> yeah. <You know, I, laughs> but you know what I mean? It's you're always working and I'll come back to to both of us now, but you're always working to have that variety and I think that makes it a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Yep. No, absolutely trying to get variety into what I put out there and not have just you know, one style that is always, you know, always looks the same kind of thing. Right. Um, yeah. You know? No, it's, it, it's great. Yeah. It's just following my own stitching interests. You know, I, I've always, you know, my whole history of stitching has always been doing different things. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing with designing as well is lots of different things. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's yeah. terrific. So all four of them. So yeah. off, you, you can order from your local needlework store. Because uh, the uh, all all of all of your stuff is distributed by Hoffman, so all the needlework stores can get uh, all of your designs. Mm -hmm. And then sometime after market, if people want to get it through your Etsy shop, those four will be available. Correct. Yes. Outstanding. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations. Really, I just that's four good ones. That's really nice. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.